Well, it was hard for uh, America, I think, in general, to soldier through that press conference yesterday where the president of the United States announced a sweeping a sweeping measure to get rid of student loan debt for people in this country. Not all students who have loan debts, just the ones who have federal loans. Uh, it, it's it's a massive, massive move in bloated federal government. And the power of the president to do this has a lot of people scratching their heads. Well, that's why I want to bring on our next guest. Rick Santorum on the Annie Fry Show is with the Convention of States Project, and we are very excited to welcome him here. Mr. Santorum, thank you so much for your time today. We're very grateful for it. Thank you, Annie. It's good to be with you. I appreciate it. So the con- a Convention of States is a topic that over the years that I've been doing this radio show, everyone is every once in a while coming up and like, what about a Convention of States? What about a Convention of States? And I've looked into it. It's very, it's a very interesting concept. And I think it's something that more people need to be educated on. So tell me about the Convention of States project and what a Convention of States would mean for our country. Yeah, a Convention of States project was founded about 10 years ago with the idea uh, that there's one provision of the Constitution uh, that was put in place to be the final check on the, on the federal government. If you go back and look at the, at the founding fathers at the, at the convention, there all of the talk, you read the Federalist Paper, it's about how you can check power, particularly of the executive. They were worried about a king. They were worried about an all-powerful, because every Republican in the history of time has ended up with a, with an emperor or a king or a tyrant at the top of it because it's just the, the it, and you look at what happened yesterday. It's a, it's a perfect example why that happens. You have someone who ingratiates himself by taking other people's money or borrowing money and hands it out to a select few who will support him. This happens in Venezuela. It happens in other countries around the world where you see republics undermined by people buying votes and buying support by giving specific benefits to people from a diffused group of folks, right? Who's, you hear the question, who's paying for this? Well, we don't know who's paying for this. No one can say, oh, this is going to hurt me. So you, you do these very clever tricks that tyrants have used throughout the course of history. And our founders were very keen on making sure that there was a group of people outside of the federal government who had the power to check that type of activity. And that's what Article 5 of the Constitution is all about. Article 5 of the Constitution provides two ways for amendments to the Constitution to be proposed. Now, every proposed amendment under Article 5 has to go to the legislatures of all 50 states, and 38 states' legislatures have to ratify whatever is proposed. The two bodies that can propose amendments, one we're all familiar with, which is the Congress. Hmm. So all of the amendments so far to date that have been adopted uh, and proposed uh, and sent to the states for ratifications came from Congress. And Congress has to have two thirds of the of the of the Congress support a proposed constitutional amendment. If two thirds of the House and Senate uh, propose it, then it gets to the state sent to the states for ratification. The second method is for two thirds of the state legislatures to pass a resolution to call for a convention of states. And at that convention of states, all 50 states would would be present. Each state would get one vote and there would be a debate. Uh, It would be a a huge deal. I mean, it's never been done in the history of our country. So we would have a national convention with all 50 states sending delegations to it to have a debate about what the role of the federal government should be. Because our convention of state resolution that's now been passed by 19 states, including Missouri, says that there are three types of amendments that could be considered at this convention. One, to limit the terms of all federal office holders, so it could be from the Congress and senators to Tony Fauci, right, mm. the head of the uh, head of the CDC or whatever other position, head of the FBI. All those things could be could be limited in terms. Uh, second would be a limit on spending or balanced budget or a tax limitation. Some fiscal restraint would be in order. And the third, which I think is the most important, which is a limitation on the jurisdiction of the federal government. So the federal government couldn't, for example, get involved in primary and secondary education or can't get involved in, uh, in, in uh, you know, regulating uh, the uh, uh, the healthcare industry, or whatever the case may be, all of those types of things would be 
would be eligible for, for being proposed. And again, if they're proposed, they need 26 votes, 26 of the states would have to support them, but then it would have to go to the, to, to the 38 state legislatures. And so I, people always say, well, you know, bad things could happen as well as good things, but they're worried about the bad things. If you, if you have to get 38 state legislatures to ratify any proposal, I don't see too many bad things that are going to get 38 state legislatures uh, to, to uh, ratify something. Yeah, I think that's a really key point that you're making, because as we've uh, promoted that we were going to talk to you today on our YouTube live chat poll is would you support a convention of states? Yes or no. People have questioned whether or not if you open that can of worms, then some of the crazy things that people might want to do uh, to affect the future of this country would then be put in a position to be put in play. You're saying that it's not likely. Yeah, first off, you have to start from where we are now. I mean, does anyone really believe that our country isn't heading more toward a, a, a tyrannical socialist regime? I mean, yeah. it, it's happening. I mean, I, I, I know people would like to think, oh, America will always pull itself back from the brink. Well, they would be the first republic in history to do so. The average length of a republic is about 300 years, two to 300 years. I mean, we're, we're, not, we're not in a favorable position if you just go back and look at history. Do I believe America is different? Yes. But it's because we have provisions like this in our Constitution, because our founders understood the dangers of republicanism, if you will, that, 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 that leaders will tend to do what Joe Biden does and, and pay off its, its, uh, its adherence uh, at, to sacrifice the, the, the many for the few. This is, this is why this provision is here. So, yes, I believe we can pull ourselves back from the brink, but we need to use the tools the founders gave us to do it. And that's why when I hear people say, I'm worried about what will happen, wrong question. You should be worried about what is going to happen if we don't do something. That is such a great point. Rick Santorum with us right now with the Convention of States Project. You can uh, learn more about their, their project at conventionofstatesproject.com. I would like to know uh, your thoughts. You said that this would be a huge deal. If we were to engage in a convention of states, never been done before in American history, it would be a massive undertaking and a massive yeah. deal. You have been in the Senate. You have run for president and had success in the primary uh, running for office. You've worked with a lot of people across the board. And I keep hearing that word come up in different headline after different story after different issue is unprecedented. Never before. Never in history. This is something that continues to be part of our news cycle in in pretty uh, provocative ways. Just tell me right now where you are in, in your political career, this moment in time, how concerned you are about the future of the country. Uh, you, you're you look, I 10 years ago, I was not for this. I wasn't for this. I thought, you know what? We can handle this. I mean, there, there's there's still time for us to sort of put the genie back in the bottle. I don't believe that's true anymore. And and candidly, it's it's because the left has now solidly taken over. I mean, I'm talking about the left. I'm talking about socialists, Marxists have taken over at one of the parties. And socialists and Marxists are for tyrannical centralized governments. They're not for federalism. They're not for uh, California being able to do what California wants to do, and Alabama and Missouri can do what they want. No, they want to. They want everybody to comply with what their worldview is, and they will. And they will penalize you if you don't, and reward you if you do. As as the as the master students in in lesbian dance are now, uh, you know, who who are now getting paid ten thousand yeah. uh, dollars to get their student loans paid off. This is this is how these organizations. These, these socialist organizations work. And so I'm now of the opinion that because of that, and candidly, I mean, I, you know, I love what Donald Trump did, and Donald Trump did a lot of great things as president, but Donald Trump also called for the end of the filibuster. Donald Trump was also someone who, you know, was frustrated with the levers of power and how slowly they move in Washington and said, you know, we need to ignore some of these things and pass some I would argue it's the marginal executive orders that he used to, to spend money. Not anything close to what Biden did. But the point is, I see both parties being tainted by the swamp. And, and I, just, I just think the only way out is people say drain the swamp. You can't drain the swamp unless you have structural changes that will stop the water from coming in. 
And you just can't say, well, you know, let's hope it doesn't rain. It's, it's going to rain. <laughs> what we have to is the founders should put in place at the, with the original Constitution ways to preserve federalism, ways to limit the power of the federal government. Most of them have been removed. The most important one was the 17th Amendment, where legislatures used to elect members of the United States Senate, and the senators were responsive to the needs of the state, the state legislatures, not the people. You say, well, that's terrible. Well, it wasn't terrible. It, it kept Washington small, and it kept states as a very viable en entity for allowing people to live under this federal system. That has been removed. Supreme Court removed a whole bunch of other things that limited the power of the federal government. And the only way to fix that is structural changes to restore our federalist society. Rick Santorum, thank you so much for the time today. I'd like to to uh, follow up with you uh, sometime soon more about this issue as people. I know that I'm going to get a lot of feedback from this conversation. People are going to be asking me questions and I'm going to need to ask them to you. So we're going to invite you back. I look forward to it. And, thank and, you. and we're grateful for your time today. Thank you so much. Thanks, Annie. Bye bye now. Bye bye. Rick Santorum with the Convention of States Project. If you want to learn more about this, if you have questions, if he's piqued your interest, if you're concerned about something like this happening, just go to conventionofstates.com and you can learn more about what Rick Santorum is doing with that Convention of States Project. It's a very interesting idea. It's part Article 5, as he said. This is constitutional and it is there for a reason. Another one of those in case of emergency break glass situations. Gosh, it just seems like they keep happening. Uh, in, in our news cycle today. I just couldn't sit by anymore and do nothing. I always said I hated politics, but I found out that you can't really change things if you don't get involved. What we're looking for is somebody that uh, has the heart and wants to help save their country. It's just a, the nicest group of people that I've ever worked with.